If you stood on Emikusi Peak in the Tibesti mountain range 14,000 years ago, you would see rushing rivers and huge lakes running through lush green savannas filled with wildlife. However, now you will see nothing but rocky landscapes and sand dunes because the Emikusi Peak is in the middle of the Sahara Desert. To understand why, we have to know what cold ocean currents, rain shadow systems, the Hadley Cell, and low solar energy have in common. They are climate systems that create deserts. However, they all create very different deserts. As we delve into the four different types of deserts and the systems that created them, we need to define what a desert is. A desert is characterized by its arid nature, with minimal precipitation or rainfall. Keep this in mind as we discuss the final desert type. So, the reason the Sahara is no longer green is because of the cycle of change in the Earth's tilt on its axis. As a result, the previous climate conditions caused much heavier rain in the Sahara region, but today the Sahara is a subtropical desert, and the weather system that prevents rainfall in subtropical deserts is the Hadley Cell. These subtropical deserts are found along the Tropic of Cancer, between 15 and 30 degrees north of the equator, or along the Tropic of Capricorn, between 15 and 30 degrees south of the equator. The Hadley cell drives subtropical deserts by lifting moist air at the equator, causing it to cool, condense, and release rainfall. As this dry, descending air then reaches around 30 degrees latitude, it warms and suppresses cloud formation. This descending motion creates high-pressure zones, inhibiting further moisture and leading to arid conditions. This is the main system that prevents rainfall in the Sahara Desert. Cold ocean currents create coastal deserts. So when we head south and look at the Namib Desert, we see it is a classic example of a coastal desert caused by cold ocean currents. Stretching along Africa's southwestern coast, the Namib Desert covers more than 2,000 kilometers. Its dunes, some surpassing 300 meters in height, are constantly being shifted by the wind. Despite the seemingly desolate landscape, the presence of ocean mist has fostered adaptation among robust flora and fauna. This mist is caused by moist air blowing toward shore over the cold ocean waters. The cold ocean temperatures are due to the Benguela Current, a large, slow-moving cold current that makes its way up from the Antarctic waters in the southern Atlantic Ocean and flows up to the western coast of Africa. Even though the air is moist, the cold temperature prevents the formation of clouds. So the dunes of the Namib are often draped in blankets of fog, but very rarely are there any significant clouds, meaning the area sees very little rainfall. If we have a look at the southeastern coast of Africa, where the warm Agulhas current flows from north to south, we will see a tropical climate with high rains brought on by warm, moist air flowing over land from the ocean. Despite the distance between the southwestern and southeastern coast being similar to the distance between Dallas, Texas and Los Angeles, California, the coastal climates couldn't be further apart. Moving over to North America, the largest of the semi-arid deserts on the continent is caused by a rain shadow system. The Great Basin Desert is part of the Great Basin between the Sierra Nevada and the Wasatch Range. The desert is located on the eastern side of the Sierra Nevada mountain range, and this wall of mountains is what creates the rain shadow effect. Much like the eastern coast of Africa from the previous example, where the warm ocean air flowed over the coast, causing it to release precipitation. The same effect happens here on the western coast of the United States. However, as the air flows over the coast and rises over the mountains, it cools and condenses, resulting in rainfall, and upon descending the leeward side, the now drier air absorbs moisture from the land, leading to arid conditions known as a rain shadow desert. This effect is prominent in regions like Central Asia, where the vast Himalayan mountain range causes dry conditions on the northern side, creating the Gobi Desert. We explained earlier that a desert is defined by rainfall and not temperature. This is important because the two largest deserts in the world are both extremely cold. The two largest deserts are the polar deserts, the Arctic and the Antarctic desert. Polar deserts exhibit extreme cold and low precipitation levels. These desolate landscapes result from cold air sinking and creating high pressure areas, which prevents moisture from forming clouds and falling as precipitation. With frigid temperatures, the little available moisture remains locked in ice. Harsh winds and low temperatures further limit plant growth. 
The unique polar wildlife species are adapted to survive in these austere conditions, relying on snow and ice for water. These deserts provide insights into how life endures in some of Earth's most challenging environments. It's evident that the climate system defines the desert type. In our shifting climate, slight changes can profoundly alter landscapes. Desertification poses a major risk, potentially leading to massive human displacement all over the world. If you want to know more about combating desertification, watch this video about the African nations taking on an ambitious project to halt the Sahara Desert's expansion.